As you can see, I'm gonna show you how to fabricate this temp bridge on a model. Unfortunately, I don't have a patient, but the same concepts will apply. And by the way, my best advice to a new dental assistant or anybody struggling to fabricate temps is to do this, practice on a model. You can save like a model from the lab that you're not gonna use anymore and practice on it. That way you have time, maybe a little bit during your lunch time or after work to practice, um, practice a new technique, or you know, just get feedback from your dentist or an awesome coworker that is great at making temps and get that feedback to help you become better. Um, I definitely had to do this when I was starting as a dental assistant because I had to develop my hand skills. It didn't come you know, instantly for me. So um, practice, practice, um, it's really what you will need. Also, a while back, Gabby made a video on how to fabricate an interior temporary crown. And I highly recommend that you check it out because she goes into step by step of how to make it. And I'm not going to be so detailed in this video, but it's because the same things that she talked about in that in her video, it applies to every type of temporary that you fabricate you know it's just all the basic rules will apply on let's say this video of a temporary bridge so check it out now for this one um, I'm starting with the football carbide it's my favorite <laughs> burr to um, trim to start trimming with uh, you can also use a diamond burr or an acrylic burr especially just to get that you know, the excess amount, not really to get too close to the margin, but just like to remove that excess. But as you can see, I don't really have that much excess. So this one should be fine. And all I'm doing is just that, getting the excess, not really worrying too much about, you know, finishing the margin or everything else. Unfortunately, I had to get my light because I couldn't see very well, so it won't show very clearly on the video when I start, I think, looking at the margins, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> so as you're trimming, you may want to blow some air on the temporary, and you see that I have my HV section. Um, so that minimize the, <laughs> all, all the dust that it's coming from the temp bridge. As you start getting closer to the inner proximal areas, if you're a newbie, you're going to have the urge to just want to smooth that bulky <laughs> area that's there. But do not do that because that's really what's going to help maintain the inner proximal contact with the adjacent tooth. And as you can see, I, I will trim around it to make it smooth and part of the anatomy. And it sucks that it doesn't really show very well, but I'm trimming that at an angle right there at the edge. And I will also do that on the side. And like I said, if you're a newbie, it's gonna look weird, but there are ways that you can make it so that it blends with the two. Sometimes you may need to add around it or trim. What you don't wanna do is remove that excess area so to speak because then when you try the temporary bridge you're gonna see that there's an open space between the temp and the tooth next to it and you know food's gonna get trapped in there and it's a little bit more challenging to add a contact I mean sometimes you have to do it regardless but it's best that it's something is there already and you just have to add a little bit more of either flowable or you know resin to uh, make sure that you have a, a broad and tight contact. Once I'm pretty much done with removing the bulk of the acrylic, I start looking for any defects such as voids or if I need to add resin to improve on the anatomy. This would be the time that I start doing that before I start um, you know doing the final touches to the temporary make sure to also try in the temporary on the teeth a few times <laughs> before you finish trimming it 
um, for example, you can see here, okay, I need to open the embrasures a little bit more. Um, how is the Pontec looking? How are the margins? You can see that there's still excess there. So you don't want to fully trim your temporary and then once it's done, try it in because you'll be surprised how many changes you may need to do <laughs> throughout the whole time. To start working on the embrasures, I'm going to switch gears into using um, either like a 557 or a 245 or something, a scaper like a flame, just because um, I want to start rounding off that embrasure area. And mainly what I'm doing now is creating a slot. And that slot is for the disc that I'm going to be using. Now, you could also, um, if you have a metal disc, use this to create that slot and start shaping a little bit better, but I didn't have a metal disc, so I'm using the burst to help me out, as you can see, and then we're gonna move on to using the disc. So now I'm grabbing the disc and I start with the very coarse disc on the slow speed and I'm at an angle I'm starting to smooth those edges and trying to get the best embrasure opening as possible. Um, it, this is difficult because you just have to turn, keep turning the temporary bridge Oh, look at this. Remember to fulcrum. <laughs> you don't want to like freehand it. Even though you're not working on a patient, you could still lose your grip and possibly cut, cut your hand. So you want to maintain your fulcrum. So see, I'm just trying to find the right angle. You can also flip the disc, um, but I think I'm just trying to use one side and then let me see if I find a better image. I really like using discs um, because they're flexible and it's they're very helpful when you want to contour things. See, I'm blowing some air to remove some of the dust. Oh, there's another little boy that I just can't leave alone. <laughs> I'm going to fix that. Something that is very important to look at when you're fabricating your temporary bridge are the embrasure spaces because they need to be wide enough so that the gums have space to fill in the area nicely, but not too wide that there's going to be a food trapping issue. Also, you need to know that the patient needs to be able to floss underneath it. So my rule of thumb is that if you can insert the probe just enough that it's going through, then your embrasure opening is fine. You can also use the floss shredder to see if it goes through and there you go. If it doesn't, then you need to open a little bit, but be careful to open just enough space. Again, you don't want to create an area that it's going to get food trapped. Next thing is to check the margins and you're going to run the Explorer up and down and you basically don't want to feel any catches or like an opening space for the Explorer to fit in. You want to be able to run the Explorer and feel it smooth between the margin line and the crown. Also, as you can see, you just have to know exactly where your margin is. Try to evaluate it really well so that you are able to determine whether you have an overhang or it's not sitting all the way, not closing. Then you're going to check your interproximal contacts with the floss. Also, make sure to use the floss shredder to go underneath the embrasures. Make sure that's okay. Everything should feel really tight. And now you have your final product. Now, I do not like the aesthetics on that premolar, so let's fix that. Okay, guys, so when I was editing the video, I noticed that um, part, like right here on the mesial, it's not ideal. I think if I floss, which is hard when you're flossing on a model, um, 
the contact is fine. But, you know, if you were working on a patient, you probably want to correct that little space so that aesthetically it looks better. But let's say that you were missing also the contact, right? Like, you just want to feel that whole thing. The easiest way for me is to, you can trim a little bit of this just across. It doesn't matter that you're taking off the current contact because we'll add it later, but like I said, you grab a little bit of your composite. Obviously, this one is expired. It's what I use for temps. Um, I used to work a lot with snap acrylic, which I know <laughs> super old. Um, but just any anything, or if you have something like Robotech, you can add it. Flobo will be a little bit tricky for this technique, um, so I wouldn't try that. But what I would do is just basically, I'm going to put like a chunk, just like that. And I'm going to kind of just fold it around. On the model, it's probably going to get stuck a little bit, but on the teeth, it doesn't really do that. But you can always apply a, a very, very... Um, like slight coat of Vaseline on that tooth if you're worried about it. Okay, sits and so that excess is gonna flow a little bit and it will create a really nice contact for you. So all you have to do is with a plastic instrument just come and kind of blend everything together a little bit. You don't want it to over, you don't want to cure it while it's overflowing onto the other teeth. And make sure that you either have the patient button down or that you're holding the temporary with your fingers. I'm going to get some of this excess. Just kind of like the same way that you would see your dentist creating uh, interproximal contact while doing fillings. So this is one way to um, be creative and troubleshooting any issues that you may have. Now you can add a little bit more um, in that space, but for this, I'm just going to, and okay, just because it's a model, I'm going to cure it outside, but let me show you. Can you tell your new contact? It's nice and flat, uh, but if you're working the mouth, just cure it just like that. See, I don't have that much excess happening, so it's not going to get locked with the other teeth. Doing this in the model is just a little bit more tricky but you would cure it in the mouth and then voila. Now, it's not done because once you cure it, you still want to go back with the burr and blend a little bit of that excess as needed and you gotta double check your interproximal contact. But this is a easy and quick way to fix that. can always add or take. Now on to the last step is to polish your temporary bridge. And this is especially important for when you're doing anterior bridges. I just basically grab pumice, make it like a little paste, put it on the temp and run it um, with your wet rag wheel. And it's just going to smooth a little bit. Um, everything needs to be smooth on the tent, by the way, because the pumice is not really going to help you with the smoothing. It's just going to do a little bit and mainly shine it up. Can you tell? It's already looking better. Now, for if you really wanted a good shine, you can use something like Fortify or some people use Bond. Um, I think there's other glazes for actual temporaries and you just basically apply it on it on especially on the facial surfaces wherever it's going to be the most visible 
and it's gonna get light cured. I forgot to actually air dry it. I wish, it, like once you apply it, I usually air dry it a little bit and then you go ahead and cure it. Thank you so much for continuing to support our videos. If you like my tips on how to fabricate a posterior temporary bridge, please hit the like button. Also, if you have any tips of your own or if you have any more questions, let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also check out our other videos on temporary. And I will see you guys next time. Keep smiling.